Hi everyone, today in this video we're going to take a look at VST3 plugin support for vMix 20. Now in order to use VST3 plugins, you'll need to make sure that you've got 20.0.0.41 or above installed. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology, and it's a software interface that allows you to use plugins to alter, correct, and monitor your audio. Plugins like VST3 are used in professional music studios to create awesome sound, and now it's available for your live video productions in vMix. vMix supports VST3 64-bit plugins, which is important to remember when searching for and using plugins. There are plenty of older plugins that use VST and VST2 on the market, but VST3 is the current version supported by the creators of the VST standard, Steinberg. There are plenty of older version plugins available, but for every good one, there are hundreds of old ones that just won't work, they're unreliable, or they're no longer maintained by the creator. So remember when searching, look for VST3 64-bit. There are plenty of reliable VST3 64-bit plugins available, and many places, like Waves, will offer you a free trial of the plugin before you buy. There are also free VST3 64-bit plugins too, but only download these from reputable sources and follow the three rules of live streaming. To test, test, and test some more. Now if you've downloaded a VST3 plugin from a website, typically it will come with an installer that will put it in the correct location for VST3 files. This folder is Program Files, Common Files, VST3. The files located here will only ever be .vst3 files. So as you can see here in my folder, I've got a number of vst3 files that I can use in vMix. Okay, so now we're in vMix, I'll show you how you can add a plugin to an audio input. So we'll go to the settings, and you'll see a new section here called plugins. Now if we use the plus and minus symbol here, we can add and subtract plugins from our audio input. Now if I click the plus symbol here, and select the driver that's associated with the plugin. So we have one here from Waves. So I'll click that one here. Now, if we have multiple Wave plugins, it associates with the same driver. So if we click the, uh, the drop down menu here, we would see multiple plugins there if we had multiple Wave plugins. So we'll just select this one here, which is a vocal stereo plugin. So that's going to bring up our editor screen. And as you can see, it's uh, currently active in vMix because it's been ticked and you should be able to hear a change in my audio. So for an example, we're going to set up a really crazy delay on this. So this is an example of how to add effects to your audio now in vMix. So that's super annoying, so we're just going to turn off this. So before we do that, I'll just show you some more features of different plugins. So this, this plugin itself allows you to save and load presets. So if I set a particular preset here, um, I, I would be able to then load it up again really easily and save it. Um, so yeah, we're actually going to close down the editor. If you ever need to bring the editor up again, you just select it and click Show Editor. So this uh, vocal is probably a little bit annoying, so we're just going to turn it off now. Now as you can hear, my audio has gone back to normal. Now you can also create shortcuts for your production. So I can create a button on a MIDI controller, X keys, keyboard, Xbox controller, whatever I wanted to use, or even a web controller to turn on and off a VST3 plugin. So if you saw one of our shows, we, when we talked about VST3, I press a button and I created a huge delay and a huge echo on the microphone. But it was only temporary, I only wanted to use it for a little bit. So I turned that on and then I turned it off when I didn't need to use it anymore. So in order to remove it, I can click it and hit the minus key. So if I want to add another one, for example, I can select it here and click OK and then it will bring up that editor. And I can add multiple ones as well. So as you can hear now, my audio has changed again because these are now active. So I'm going to turn these off. Now you notice on the left-hand side, you'll see pre and post. Pre is the audio coming into vMix and post is after it has been uh, mixed in vMix and also added your plugins to the audio. So we've just showed you how to add a plugin to an audio input. Now you can also add it to your master audio as well. So I can go to my audio, master audio settings and add a plugin here. Now this might be handy if you only want a plugin to be affecting your overall audio. You want your microphones mixed individually, maybe with different plugins there, and then you might have a different plugin again on your master audio. So this might be good for like overall levels or overall volume or something for your production. 
So that was a really quick overview of how to add VST3 plugins into vMix. Now there are a lot of different plugins to choose from that do a whole range of different things with audio. It's a really good idea to have a look online and have a look at recommendations for different VST3 plugins and what they can do. We have a forum post on our forums that will point you to different third party plugins in regards to VST3. So I'll link that in the description below and it will list people's recommendations for different plugins. Now remember always make sure that you test out these plugins at length before going live with them as well. So thanks for watching this video. If you do have any questions, please head over to vmix.com and go to our support page and send us through an email. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Click to watch another exciting vmix tutorial.